Good evening, Fernwood. It is your peanut butter loving pal Neil here, and it's time for us to go nuts with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Today we are watching episode 155 from November 5th, 1976. Let's recall what happened yesterday. It is the beginning of Mary Hartman homecoming day and everyone is getting involved. That includes Nurse Gimble and her husband Garth, as well as Wanda Rittenhouse and Merle Jeters. Mary says a very fond goodbye to Chester who holds on to his peanuts lunchbox as though it still has the nuclear plutonium in it. Garth and Nurse Gimble have a little bit of trouble covering up the bruise that Mary found on Nurse Gimble's elbow. And Mona McKenzie checks into the mental ward as a new patient. She was having some trouble on the road and needs a rest. Back at the Shumways, Martha and Grandpa Larkin meet Jack and Jill, who claim that George, who has been missing for several weeks of episodes at this point, is on a spaceship in outer space, and they will take $3,000 or more to reach him and arrange for him to come home. Then at the Capri Lounge, Merle Jeter and Wanda Rittenhouse get closer to each other, and Wanda makes very clear that she wants to see Merle in a political arena and that she's willing to put her political strength behind him. And then finally at the Capri Lounge again, Charlie runs into Jody Troxel, who knew Charlie when he was a child as a mechanic for car racing. This seems to be a bold new direction for Charlie's life because Jody wants to be a driver with Charlie on his side. Let us do the thing where we watch the thing and then later we'll talk about the thing. Mary Hartman! Mary Hartman! Right there? Yep. Put one there. Hey, here they come! Oh, here they come, everybody! to public speaking. Um, I would just like to say that uh, it's really nice um, to see my family and friends again without the restrictions of visiting hours and medication. <laughs> and I would also like to say that um, you are the nicest uh, family and friends that I personally have ever known. And um, I would also like to say that I feel that in burying um, the time capsule that we're going to give a whole new start to our lives, you know? And I also think that a new start to Fernwood, which, you know, we hope to live in. And have, and, and have lived in. Yeah. And, and hope to live in. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Everybody, everybody, wait now. Now, this is a very, very special day here. This is this is a bigger day than Hawk's calling back home, and that was a real rip snorter with whooping and howling, following down all over the place. But, but this this here is Mary Hartman Homecoming Day, and and it's also Election Day. And 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 in honor of this occasion. My own sweet Loretta has has created a song which she wrote herself just just a few minutes ago. She hasn't even had time to court it yet. Now come on up here. Loretta's going to sing her song. Here. Sing it, Loretta. Oh, come on, honey. Sing it, Loretta, honey. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh, Mary, would you help that? Oh sure. Okay. Hit it, Loretta. It's a great day for Mary Hartman and the good old. Help. 
be nice and productive and totally free from strife. Yeah! Sorry, got sorry. a brand new time to start a new yeah. beginning. Our no, Ma, don't do that. Porter Carter, which Ma, please don't dance. Winning. It's embarrassing. To help us march to glory Ma. as we face a brand new start. La. Is this in the As for Mary and our country, let's all shout out. Yay! that song because I really have a feeling it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, <laughs> you all right? Yeah. Listen, uh, I, uh, I'll go, go up and put this away. You know. What? Oh, Tom, i got to tell you something. What? First thing. Um, do you know what's in here? This is Chester's Peanuts lunchbox. Now, Heather, turn away. Now, he doesn't know that I have his Peanuts lunchbox. He has Heather's Peanuts lunchbox, but he thinks it's his Peanuts lunchbox. But this is his Peanuts lunchbox. And do you know what's in it? His lunch? Enough plutonium to blow up the entire state of Ohio. Mary. Look, Tom, I know you think I'm crazy. Everybody, please! Feel free to dip. Ma, you can dance now, okay? Dance, okay, Ma? Now, Tom, I know that you think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, plutonium-239 is in here, and it breathes. Hey, hey, come on, if you keep talking like that, they're gonna pop you right back in that nut house. I thought you were all, you were all cured. I am, Tom, and the only way I can stay cured and keep all the rest of a life in Ohio, and we've gotta keep Ohio alive for 100 years to bury this in the time capsule. I'm telling you, Tom, the next generation will know what to do with the leftover of the plutonium. I'm sure of that. Well, okay, okay, then bury it in the time capsule, and maybe we can, you know, get rid of this nonsense and start leading a normal, happy life around here, okay? Tom, why won't you believe me? I'm trying to protect us so that we can try to live a longer life, that's all. I mean, just so we can even try to live. Welcome home. I'll get it! Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. I'll get it. Hi! Hi! Hi. All set for the big day? Oh, oh, Nurse Gimbal, your arm. Oh, my. Oh, so many tragedies. Fortunately, she has so few limbs left to deal with. Don't worry, Mary. It's really much better. Much. See, I beg to differ. I mean, to me, it looks much worse. Like this morning, it was black and blue. And now, it is black and blue and yellow. Well, Mary, what you have to realize is sometimes the sweetest peaches have little bruises. Right, peaches? Right. again, really. <laughs> oh, thanks. Mary, how you feeling now? Are you, are you fully recovered? Or? You're as recovered as you think you are. <laughs> Say that again. What? W what you just said. You're recovered as you think you are? Yeah. I like that. It has a ring to it. It does, doesn't you it? You know, I think you ought to put that in your speech for today. Yeah. Boy, does that make sense. <laughs> that fits the occasion perfectly, Mary. You know, I think we have just put the oregano in the stew. <laughs> Do you? That could be the theme for the new Fernwood. Oh, the Chamber of Commerce Numero Unos are gonna dunk their donuts in this one. <laughs> you're, you're as recovered as you think you are. <sighs> Bumper stickers. Mary, that's the kind of coal we need to run the train that brings in new industry. Thank you, Mary. Oh, we see, all I meant was... Uh, I, Time to go, everybody. Let's get this show on the road. Let's go! Everybody ready? ready? Time to start the parade and the ceremony. Let's go. Gentlemen, start your engines. Garth, if, if I could, just, just take a moment here. Fire away. It's okay, thank you. Well, as my, my dear late son, Jimmy Joe, would have said at a moment like this, Oh, Lord, 
Blessings on this enterprise. At this hour, this reporter thinks it is safe to say that a clear pattern has begun to emerge. This pattern is based, of course, on those seven absentee ballots cast in that small farming community in northern New Hampshire. But thanks to the genius of modern computers, those seven votes tell it like it is. Yes, sir, the nation's choice of a leader for the next four years is already in the proverbial bag. <sighs> well, we won't have to go through this again for another four years. When the 49 states choose another president. 49? Don't you mean 50? 50 minus Ohio is 49. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you'll find out soon enough. You'll also find out why I am going down in American history, or should I say going up. I don't get it. Hmm? You will, Mona. You will. We're all going to get it. Your days of worrying about your career as a sex therapist are just about over. Terrific. Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. There's chocolate milk in my thermos bottle. So? Where's my device? Chester, your device is where it's always been. My explosive device is gone. No, it's not, Chester. Now just look and you'll see, okay? My device is gone. Oh dear, you're suffering from performance anxiety. Chester, you still have your device, believe me. <laughs> Hopefully, the big story was Mary Hartman homecoming day in the burial of Fernwood's own time capsule. Mrs. Hartman selected the contents of the capsule, injecting one rather light note into the otherwise solemn proceedings, as she selected for burial in the time capsule a Peanuts lunch kit. That is my lunch kit that they're burying. Mary Hartman stole my nuclear device. Over there, whose eggs are ready? Hi, Annie. Hi. Oh, wait, sit down. Oh, oh thank you. Have a seat. Yeah. Thanks. Listen, uh, Mary, you, you met Annie, right? Annie, you met... Oh, yeah, I, uh, we met on uh, television. I'm sorry, I'd offer you some eggs, but I only have four, enough for two. It's two pieces. Oh, well, don't worry about it. I'm fasting anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, I'm sorry, Mary, that we couldn't meet last night, but you guys sounded real private, so I thought I'd wait. Mm. Well, good, because we are private. How private did we sound? Oh, I can't hear anything, except in the driveway, but it's next to my trailer. Oh, well, that's good, because we do very little there. I mean, really, very little. And, um, you know, it's good for you, too, because you need your privacy, too. Huh. Whoa! Welcome to our driveway. <laughs> I'd say our house, but it's not our house, is it? It's our driveway, isn't it? Um, which is good for you, too, because, you know, you have the privacy that you wouldn't get in the house because there are no married people in there. The driveway, you know. Well, it suits me just fine. And it was really super nice of your husband to help me out. No, Annie, listen, it was great of you helping me out. Really, help, really. Help you out? How did he help you out? Well, Annie, Annie read me all these things that, that Emerson said about doing it yourself. Doing what yourself? Oh, Tom. Oh, Annie. No, honey, honey. You know, things, life, you know, yeah. business decisions, stuff like that. You know, you know, it gave me a great idea. You know, I ought to go and I ought to advertise myself, you know? I mean, the dealer's not going to give any money out for actors or anything like that, and I figure out I should do it for myself, right? Huh? Tom, Ideas? you are so quick. <laughs> I mean, even Emerson couldn't have come up with that. Yeah. With what? I mean, I could, I could do it like an actor, for, for no money, though, of course, like a spokesman. And that way I could, I could you know, bring in more business, get more money, and, and get more commissions, see? Oh, Tom, that sounds terrific. Well, I'm off. Hey, uh, oh, listen, what do, what do you think? Do you think I should say, what do you think, or I've got an idea? I've got what an idea. I've got an idea, right, right. Don't ask him, tell him, huh? Hey, we gone. <laughs> Megan, I've got a great idea. We gone. That is so sad. Do you know that Tom and I were in the same grammar class in high school, and he still says, we gone? He was just throwing in some CB, that citizen's band lingo, trying to make me feel at home. You know, Tom is really going to look good in a commercial. Mrs. Wiley. What? Oh, was I rushing Tom too much? I mean, suggesting things? I mean, you know him so much better than I do. It's just that... 
Well, I really think he's got a potential. Uh, Mrs. Wiley, uh, how old are you? 51. You're kidding. My mother's 51. Have you seen her? No, I haven't. Why? Oh, no reason. I'm just always curious about people's ages because you can't tell by looking. I mean, like Tom. I mean, does he look 51? He doesn't, does he? Is he? No. Uh, are you asking me if I've got designs on him? Oh, no. No, no, abso not, absolutely not. That's not what I meant to ask at all. But it's what you want to know, isn't it? Well, no, it just did cross my mind, you know, that when I came home from a mental hospital that a woman who I'd just seen on television was living in my driveway. But, you know, obviously it's a very silly idea. What do you think? <laughs> Mary. I mean, who would want to deliberately, really, drive another woman stark raving mad who has already been considered by some authorities as stark raving mad by deliberately stealing her even younger than he looks husband? I don't think anyone would. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Mary, look. We're two very, very different people. And we both have different things to offer a guy like Tom. Offer? Give. Like, what do you mean, offer? Give. Oh, come on, Mary. You know he needs you. He needs you. He needs you. I don't know. There's always something about that phrase I never liked, even on soap operas. I don't like that phrase. He needs you. I don't know what it is about. I know what it is. I know what it is. It's his needing you. It's his needing you that I don't like. That's the problem there. Mary. See, now, if this were a soap opera, right now you'd say, I want us to be friends. This is not a soap opera, Mary, and I do want us to be friends in real life. There's no such thing as in real life. There is real life. You know how I feel about surprises. I just can't stand them. Now, come on. Is it who i got a feeling it is? Is it just the most nicest, most fabulous person that I ever did meet in my whole life? Is it, is it Dinah Shore? I mean, no, it's not Dinah Shore, but it's somebody just as exciting, honey. It's somebody, who I promise you, who is going to be our bad streak of luck breaker. That's who. Gosh, let's see. Somebody just as exciting as Dinah Shore. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton? No. Uh, Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, uh, Kitty Wales. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to get it. You sit right there, honey. You okay. sit right there. I'll get the door. Okay. Jody, come on in. Come in. Honey, this here, this here is Jody Troxel. <laughs> Hi, uh, Jody Troxel. <laughs> this is who my surprise is supposed to be, is, is, is as good as Dinah. <laughs> yeah, honey, Jody Troxel, son of Hubie Troxel, honey. You remember Hubie Troxel? Oh. I told you I worked with him. Jody here. Jody is a drag racing star, baby. Oh. Jody is going to be racing in the state finals up at Barnesville next Saturday. Oh, shoot. Well, gosh, Jody, hi. Sure, it's nice to me to starve anything, anytime, any place. It really is. Well, uh, listen, sit down and uh, a dinner will be ready in just a minute. Charlie, why don't you see if he uh, wants something to drink? Ah, Verna has a new drink she made up with vodka and grapefruit juice and fresca. Uh, I call it a uh, high low ball. <laughs> well, usually I take a bud, but that'll be fine. I like to try new things. Once, anyway. I, I sprung you as a surprise, <laughs> Loretta. I like to give her surprises every now and then. Because, <laughs> honey, did you know Jody, Jody had his picture in the paper yesterday. Jody was with his car in the, in the Fernwood Courier yesterday afternoon, his souped-up car. You're that Jody Trunch. I saw it. I saw that. It was a fabulous picture of you. Fabulous likeness. Do you know that car's a 1956 Chevy Bel Air? That's the same model that I souped up for your daddy. That's just back in the days when you was a lady killer. <laughs> I mean, this is real tasty. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I'll tell you something. Now, I, I don't, this may not sound very nice, but to be brutally frank, I did not think that drag racing car stars was as nicely mannered as you are. Well, you know, a lot of folks get the wrong ideas about you just because the way you look or what you do. Yeah. 
And you know another thing? You talk very refined, just like, you know, he was a college person or something. I didn't even go to high school, Miss Haggers. I, uh, only thing I ever studied been cars. I'll tell you, it is amazing how much the two of you guys have. I can't believe it. Because, you know, when I first married Charlie, all he talked, two things, only thing he talked about, cars. <laughs> well, I think I better uh, switch my train of thought right here because I'm about ready to get into some honorary talking. <laughs> Oh, shit. Well, I guess you're really excited, aren't you, about racing and everything on Saturday in Barnesville? Sweetheart. Um, Jody, Jody don't want to race in Barnesville, he says. He don't want to race? Are you... Jody, why don't you want to race? I mean, that's like Johnny Cash uh, not wanting to sing about trains or something. Honey, I bet you are the favorite to win. Well, winning's not the most important thing in my life anymore, Miss Haggers. I got bad feelings about it. You see, well, ever since my manager left with my girl... And if I stop now, I stop ahead, and if I lose, I'm a failure. Yeah, but if you don't try, then you never know. And not knowing is the worst feeling of all. And it's not like, it's not like what you're doing is, is a nine-to-five job, and that's not like what you want is factory work or something like that. I wish I, wish I, had, I wish I hadn't quit on my dream when I was your age, Jody. I mean, everybody, everybody I know, everybody said, what if you lose? What if you lose? Nobody ever said to me, what if you win? You got to go for broke in this life. Charlie, that is the baby boy that I fell in love with and lost well, my heart. I guess so, sir. Yeah, what you've got to fear, what you got to fear is not failure. What you got to worry about is your intake manifold. You got to have a cooler mixture of fuel and air coming in your intake manifold because a colder mixture is a denser than a hot one. This is man talk and I love it. Well listen, I know that, Mr. Haggers, but well I can't get any more horsepower than I got. What are you running? A modified Offenhauser Porta Sonic and I got a Cartotherm quad four barrel carb. I bet I can give you more performance. More performance. You know what? That's exactly what Tom needed last year, and that is exactly what you need. Listen, I'll tell you what. If you can get that incoming mixture into my manifold cooler, I'll race in Barnesville this Saturday. You will! Woo! Sure as Ms. Granatelli loves STP. You know something? <laughs> you know something? I just, I don't know what it is, but I have this sneaking suspicion we're going to have a miracle around this house. Pretty soon, and I got the feeling that the two of you is gonna make it. I knew you'd feel like I'd done, huh? This here young man is our bad streak of luck breaker. That's what you are, Jody. That's right. <laughs> so it's Mary Hartman homecoming day, and everyone's involved, and election day, and nuclear devastation day, and there's so many days today. Well, that party was a lot of fun, and we got to see most of our original cast there, other than George, and uh, and then many of our new extended cast, like Nurse Gimbel and Garth and Wanda and Merle, and you know, we get to see them interact a little bit, get to see their stories go forward, which was nice. And just a little bit of questionable conversation between Mary and Tom and again I'm not I'm not really sure why Mary feels the need to tell Tom what she's doing but I mean maybe she's trying to be honest maybe it's just exposition for us in the audience who might not have seen the previous episode but I'm a little bit saddened that Tom doesn't get it but I also understand that it sounds really nuts and not just because of Charlie Brown but Tom doesn't believe there's plutonium in that lunchbox and he'll just be happy that it gets buried then we get a brief exchange between Mona and Chester where Chester finally opens up his thermos and I really did have a feeling that it was going to be the switching of the lunch boxes and the nuclear stuff was in the thermos, but it's chocolate milk because that was the plan. Not that there needed to be anything in the thermos, but I guess luckily it, it sort of took up the weight that would, would not have been there without the plutonium. But I was a bit tickled by Mona McKenzie's obvious sexual misunderstanding of 
Chester's equipment or Chester's device. And that was, um, I was very amused by that. But Chester is very, very clearly feeling betrayed. But also we're all alive in Ohio. I'm not in Ohio, but those people who would have lived in Ohio on election day 1976 are thankful. We see the home with Mary and Tom at first and then Tippy Toes comes in and Tippy Toes, Annie is very clear that there's no romantic relationship or sexual relationship going on. And yet I understand when Mary feels jealousy. Mary feels some change has happened in her relationship with Tom and that Annie is a factor in that change. And I would, I would wager to say that I, I mean, not wager to say that I agree. I would agree with that. Now, are there other factors? Certainly. But is Annie giving Tom something that he's not getting from Mary? Yeah. Does Tom deserve to get support from friends that are not Mary? Also, yes. But I can see why Mary is uncomfortable with it. And she's very clearly feeling possessive of Tom. And perhaps, perhaps this dialogue that we have nowadays about being able to have friends outside of a committed relationship didn't exist in the 1970s in quite the same way. But I'm completely behind Tom and Annie's friendship in this case. I also am understanding that as a human being, Mary can have emotions. And it's a question of what happens after all of those ingredients come together into whatever they're going to come into. And then speaking of whatever they're going to come into, Charlie surprises Loretta with Jody Troxel, who is not necessarily that exciting to Loretta, but it really does feel like Charlie has the direction, and I'm really glad we don't see any more of the moping about one testicle less. But Jody was in need of direction, and putting Jody and Charlie together really, I think, is it seems like it's going to bring the best out of them, provided it doesn't lead to some terrible accident of some kind. But I would hope that we see some positive directions a little bit more before we see something awful happen, because we've got a lot of trauma in our lives, and they've got lots of trauma in their lives, and maybe they need a break. Maybe. That's what I've got to share about the end of this week's episode. Thank you so much for doing what you do because you're good people. So thank you for being good people. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching the show with me. We will see you next week in Fernwood.